This tutorial aims to give you the mindset and tools to approach web analytics or web scraping projects with confidence in Python using the Scrapey framework. I have researched many common problems that people have with the Scrapey framework through Stack Overflow and related forms and incorporated them into this tutorial to ensure a bug free developer experience. In the business world, data is power. So much insight can be gained from the internet. However, this information is present in a way to help humans and not computers. With CSS styling and JavaScript animations, fonts to make human readable graphics. However, to process this data, we must strip the CSS, the JavaScript, and the HTML, leaving us with the data we desire. It's not the end of the road once we get the data. We can perform analytics to get the best price for a product, for example, analyze stock markets, put data through an AI model, create predictions and graphs for a business context. That's what we'll be looking at for today. Who uses web scraping? Amazon are known to use web scraping to find and undercut their competitors' prices. Google uses web scraping to power their search engine by visiting every website and scraping metadata to return relevant information and build a ranking based system on how many links there is to a website and many other factors. Price comparison websites such as ones for flights scrape all airline prices for a flight you wish and return the lowest price. I am not a lawyer, thus this presentation reflects my understanding of the underlying issues. However, the presentation is based on many online sources and is probably correct in general. You can and should always verify everything by yourself. Web scraping is mostly illegal. However, if done improperly or maliciously, it can result in you being sued or criminal charges of computer hacking taken against you. Here are seven steps I condense that you can go over before you seek professional help on your project. Don't scrape too hard and use the built-in throttle from Scrapey to ensure we are not hitting their web servers too hard, which can be seen as a DDoS attack. Ensure you are not scraping data that is behind authorization, such as a login. An even bigger no-no is bypassing anti-scraping mechanisms, such as are you a robot? Check their terms and conditions. Don't scrape data that is for purchase. Keep updating the laws about web scraping, such as the Bots Act. Check and obey their robots.txt, which can be done from Scrapey. And if in doubt, ask for permission from their admin. This tutorial requires knowledge of Python, the Scrapey framework, XPAT and HTTP calls. However, a more in-depth tutorial will be published to the channel about the Scrapey framework, so make sure to describe to catch that. To start, we're gonna install Scrapey using pip. First, before we start the project, we must check if the website is rendered in JavaScript. When I disable JavaScript with a plugin, we can see it does not render. This means we will have to use a middleware called Splash to render the JavaScript before we process it in Scrapey. To start a Scrapey project, we will use the command line Scrapey start project followed by your project name. You should now see a file structure like the one shown on the screen. You should navigate inside the file structure and use a command called Scrapey Gen Spider followed by the name of your spider. After we set up our project, we need to install Splash. If we navigate to their GitHub, we have instructions for installation and configuration. After we have started our Scrapey project, we should navigate to an incognito tab on Chrome. As this is what our spider will see once we have rendered the JavaScript with Splash. It will also ensure we are not accessing certain parts of the website that needs authorization or an accepted terms of conditions. Our Scrapey project will be scraping commercial lettings in Dublin. So we will navigate to the search page, hit search, and here we can see a list of lettings in Dublin. What we will do is use this URL in Scrapey to return to this page. Then we will extract the links using XPAT of all these links to the more specific web page of that letting. We will now get the XPAT that links to all the hrefs. We will hit inspect. And as we can see here, the href or link is located in a div that has a class of box and it comes before a span that has a class of s or counter so we will now construct an xpath query to find all of these hrefs on the search page i have already assembled the xpath however i will go through it now first we will locate the div with the class of box we will then target the span with the class of s or counter and as you can see, we have 20 search results, which corresponds with the result page. But we will then target the A, or the link element, 
with the attribute href. And as you can see, we have 20 results which all target the href. Now for the code. The GitHub is in the description and it's heavily commented. There's also a blog associated with this tutorial. Make sure to check the description for both. First, we will copy and paste the commercial letting search page URL into our start URLs. We will then override the start request method and we will yield a splash request instead of a scrapey request. We will pass it the URL and we will set the callback to search page result. We'll also give it the arguments of five seconds. This is for splash and this will allow enough time for the JavaScript to be rendered. After, we will paste our XPath selector into the response XPath method and we will extract the links. We will then loop over these links and pass them to a separate splash request. However, this time, passing the callback method to the function called parse. As you can see, we are also concatenating the base URL onto the link we got as the link from the search page is a relative link. After we have scraped the search results page to get the links for the Pacific Letting web page, we want to figure out what we want to scrape. For this tutorial, we will be scraping the location, the price, the size and the amount of times the property was viewed. I already have the expat selectors however I will be going through them one by one. To begin let's go over rent price. If we hit F12 we can do control shift C and hover over the div we want to scrape. As you can see this one's quite simple as it simply has an ID of SMI price string and if we copy the selector inside we can see it works. Using the text function in XPath allows us to extract the text from the element. Let's move on to the second one. Location. Also easy as it's using an ID. We can simply just scrape it from there with the text. The second one is a little bit more difficult and we will have to search for strings. Here we're targeting the address box, then we target the span, however only if it contains the string feet, which represents the size of the apartment. Moving on to property views, another semi complicated one. For the last one, property views. It is semi difficult because we do not have a div with an ID to target. Rather, we have to use contain text to figure out the div behind it as we know what the div text will be. In this case, property views. So we will target the div that has the class of description extras. We know there is only one on the page because we've already tried. We will then find the H3 element that has the text property views as this is constant through all the web pages. We will then use following sibling to get the text that comes right after it, which is what we want. And the expat is, as you can see, it gives us exactly what we want. After we have determined what expats we need, we will extract them from the response HTML and yield them values to the scrapey framework. Now we will run the spider. We will use the command crawl followed by our spider's name. In this case we will also use the slash t and the slash o. O being output and t being type to export our data into a CSV file. From here you can see that we have scraped all the information we were looking for and it is in an easy usable format. I hope this tutorial helped. Subscribe for a more in-depth tutorial on the Scrapey framework as well as PyCharm. If you have any questions, drop a comment. Check out the blog associated with this video in the description and happy scraping.